Hey guys, in this care plan, we will explore alcohol withdrawal syndrome and delirium tremens. So in this alcohol withdrawal syndrome care plan, we will cover the desired outcome, the subjective and objective data, along with the nursing interventions and rationales. So our medical diagnosis is alcohol withdrawal syndrome. So alcohol withdrawal syndrome is a set of symptoms that occurs when a person suddenly slows down or stops drinking completely. Alcohol withdrawal includes delirium tremens, autonomic hyperactivity, nausea, vomiting, hallucinations, psychomotor agitation, anxiety, and generalized tonic-clonic seizures. After consuming alcohol regularly over a long period of time, the body becomes physically dependent on that substance. So cessation or significant reduction in alcohol results in that alcohol withdrawal syndrome and delirium tremens, which causes significant distress or impairment in their lives. So the patient will maintain or regain an appropriate level of consciousness, have stable vital signs, the absence of hallucinations, the patient will remain free of injury and regain control of daily activities and functioning. This is all what we want when they leave the hospital. Now let's take a look at our care plan for alcohol withdrawal syndrome, starting with the subject of data. So your patient is not going to be feeling very well at all. They're going to be having headaches. They're going to feel anxious. They might feel really confused. They might have some nausea, heart palpitations. All of this occurs because the body is so used to having that alcohol regularly depressing their CNS system. And so with the sudden withdrawal, the body is reacting very severely. Sometimes when the alcohol leaves the system, that confusion doesn't get any better. This is super concerning because they're lacking many vitamins that we usually get um, and they need that for their brain, right? So that excessive alcohol intake was kind of preventing those nutrients from getting to the brain like it needed to. So we'll talk about interventions that will help with this later. Now let's talk about the objective data. So the lack of CNS depression can cause the patient to become really restless, agitated, and they might have tremors, which you usually can see. And if you can't, you can ask them to hold their hands out or even just kind of gently touch their hands and you'll feel the shakiness in their hands. Often the person detoxing is going to experience uncontrollable sweating. So you might have to change their sheets often. You might see some cardiac dysrhythmias on the EKG or telemetry as the body reacts to that lack of alcohol. Their vital signs are probably going to show some tachycardia and hypertension, which is usually treated with medications that actually treat the withdrawal, which we'll talk about later. So seizures are a serious, serious side effect of withdrawal that some might have because of the effects on the brain. Now let's talk about the nursing interventions for alcohol withdrawal syndrome. So you need to perform a complete assessment on this patient, include the vital signs, play really close attention to the patient's respiratory system. You wanna make sure they're still breathing. You wanna pay attention to their neurologic system, like that confusion or agitation, and you want to pay attention to their cardiac status, like that high blood pressure and that high heart rate, right? So these can all be severely affected with this withdrawal. Include any withdrawal questions that your organization uses per protocol. We'll talk about the CWAL later. So this is going to help you to obtain baseline and determine the stage and severity. Reassessing often, usually every three hours, will help you determine the effectiveness of the interventions. There's different stages, so stage one would include the hyperactivity. Stage two includes hallucinations and seizure activity. Stage three includes DTs, confusion, fever, and anxiety. So you might think of this as mild, moderate, and severe. Maintain a patent airway and initiate oxygen as needed if their pulse ox levels drop, depending on what the doctor's orders say or the protocols. Be sure to ask questions per your facility protocol regarding the suicidal ideation. Why? Well, sometimes when these patients are coming off alcohol, they feel confused, they feel anxious, um, they just feel really not themselves. So they might start to have some suicidal ideations and experience some self-destructing ideas. So provide isolation as needed or restraints if necessary per facility protocol to keep that patient and others safe. So it's really, really important to monitor the patient's heart for cardiac dysrhythmias and irregularities. First, initiate a 12-lead EKG to obtain a baseline. Then, put the patient on telemetry per doctor order or protocol so that you can watch their heart on a regular basis. 
Remember how I mentioned prolonged confusion in some patients after the alcohol wears off? So this is called Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, and it's because of the lack of thiamine. So this has to be treated immediately or prevented by providing an IV banana bag, which is called a banana bag because it's yellow. <laughs> it's actually full of vitamins that the brain needs. This is so that that confusion does not remain permanent. This can be really scary for family members because the patient's not usually confused. So they're like, what is going on? So of course, also consider IV hydration because this patient is probably dehydrated and you don't want to um, promote any cardiac dysrhythmias. You should initi initiate seizure precautions um, per protocol. This is so that you can prevent anything from dangerous from occurring, like falling out of bed or choking on their own saliva. So keep that suction at the bedside. If you need to, you can even provide a camera in the room if they're known to have seizures a lot. That way you know when to get in there and help. So you wanna provide a really calm and safe environment for these patients. Reorient them as you need to if they're confused. This is gonna help decrease their anxiety and increase the safety of them. They already feel like really sick and not themselves. So you want to help them to not feel so overstimulated. So administer medications as appropriate and as ordered by the doctor. So my organization uses the CWA protocol, which I think many do. So this is to determine the dose of either the lorazepam or the diazepam, depending on which they choose, based on the scores that we get after going through the questions. So let me give you some examples of questions that we might ask the patient. We'll ask, do you feel anxious? And if so, how would you rate your anxiety from zero to 10? Are you seeing or hearing or feeling anything um, unusual? Do you feel restless? Other parts of the CWA are really just kind of objective. You can see them. For example, how badly are they sweating or shaking? Are their um, vital signs off the charts? They have high blood pressure, you know, high heart rate. Um, so medications that we would use are going to help to reduce the hyperactivity. We're going to prevent seizures, hopefully, and promote their sleep. They also help to decrease the blood pressure and heart rate. So our last intervention is to provide education and resources for that patient and family if they're there. So this is so important, you guys. You need to help this patient for moving forward. What's going to happen when they leave the hospital? It's scary and it's hard for them. It's so, so hard for them to stop drinking for good. They need that support and guidance. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.